Good morning. Today is Thursday, Maundy Thursday, March 28th, 2024, and it is a clear, cold day outside today. The good news is that it the, there isn't much wind. It's at uh, it's uh, only about five miles an hour right now, so it's pretty still out there. Uh, my own personal weather is mostly cloudy, but it's a good day. It's the first day of the Triduum, uh, the big three days where we remember fully Jesus' uh, arrest, his betrayal, his crucifixion, and his resurrection. Uh, as the jo Gospel of John has it, all of, the, all, all of this, his crucifixion, his resurrection, and his ascension are all part and parcel of his glorification. Uh, so today uh, we'll leave off from Rule for a New Brother for a little bit. And we will read uh, a bit from Martin Luther's large catechism today and from John's Gospel. So here's our first reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which the ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. And from Luther's large catechism. Now what is the sacrament of the altar? Answer. It is the true body and blood of the Lord Christ, in and under the bread and wine, which we Christians are commanded by, the, by Christ's word to eat and drink. And just as we said of baptism that it is not mere water, so we say here too that the sacrament is bread and wine, but not mere bread and wine such as served at the table. Rather, it is bread and wine set within God's word and bound to it. It is the word, I say, that makes this a sacrament and distinguishes it from ordinary bread and wine, so that it is called and truly is Christ's body and blood. For it is said, when the word is joined to the external element, it becomes a sacrament. This saying of St. Augustine is so appropriate and well put that he could hardly have said anything better. The word must make the, the element a sacrament, otherwise it remains an ordinary element. Now this is not the word and ordinance of a prince or emperor but of the divine majesty, at whose feet all creatures should kneel and confess that it is as he says, and they should accept it with all reverence, fear, and humility. With this word you can strengthen your conscience and declare, Let a hundred thousand devils with all the fanatics come forward and say, How can bread and wine be Christ's body and blood? etc.? Still, I know that all the spirits and scholars put together have less wisdom than the divine majesty has in his littlest finger. Here in Christ's word, take, eat, this is my body, drink of this all of you, this is the New Testament in my blood, etc. Here we shall take our stand and see who dares to instruct Christ and, the, and alter what he has spoken. It is true indeed that if you take the word away from the elements or view them apart from the word, you have nothing but ordinary bread and wine. But if the words remain, as is right and necessary, then by virtue of them the elements are truly the body and blood of Christ. 
for as Christ's lips speak and say, so it is. He cannot lie or deceive. Today, <clears throat> let's pray for all church workers, all pastors, lay leaders, all those who are uh, entering their three busiest days of the season, and uh, let's pray for their strength, for the uh, just that they would head and that they would be given God's spirit to proclaim God's word well in a way that strengthens those they're preaching to. So let's pray for them and for us the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God's blessing be with you today and every day. Worship tonight at uh, Shalom is at 6.30. Uh, hope to see you there, and if you can't, you can join us online. God be with you.